That's the sound of progress, as they say. In this case, 3D printing. A 3D printer is operating right here in our studios. You, well, we've all heard of 3D printing, but how many of us have tried it or know how these machines really work? Well, today it's a beginner's guide to 3D printing, the ABCs of 3D with uh, folks who know a lot about this. Let me introduce Bree Pettis. He is the CEO and co-founder of MakerBot Industries in Brooklyn. And today he's in our Manhattan studios, and the 3D printer is already up and running. I also want to bring in another guest into our conversation. Laura Talman is the mathematician in residence at the Museum of Mathematics in New York. And she's had a lot of success bringing 3D printing into her math classroom at James Madison University in Virginia. Uh, and she uses 3D printing to help, teacher, uh, to help teach students math through knot theory. She's brought a lot of 3D knots. Uh, Brief, let's talk about the ABCs of 3D printing. What is going on in the machine now? There. So, so what we've got here is a MakerBot Replicator Mini. This is our, our entry-level 3D printer at, at $1,375. And it's, it can make things about the size, about 4 by 4 by 5 inches tall. So like two muffins stacked on top of each other, kind of size, gives you an mm -hmm. idea how big you can make things. And a 3D printer is kind of like an, a super fancy automated hot glue gun. It takes material in, it melts it, and then it draws a picture with it. And then it draws another picture on top of that. And layer by layer, your model emerges. And where it started as just a virtual model on your computer in 3D, then it becomes a physical model and right in front of you that you can hold in your hands. So you start out with a computer version of it uh, on your screen, and you have a file, and then you feed it in to the CD printer. That's that's right, and you can you can either design the the you can design the thing yourself in a in a CAD program, or we have an application you can download called Print Shop, or you can uh, download something something else is made on our website called Thingiverse.com, or you can scan something. You can you can you can take something in the world, scan it, and make a, a, a copy of it. Like we've got Snuffleupagus here. We did a partnership with Sesame Street, and we've got a, an ugly doll here. Those are things that that you can make that are really fun. Uh, and, and as far as the technology, the, the, you have a plastic that's in there, right? There's yeah, a... so the material ma the material science this is pretty cool. We use a material called PLA, MakerBot PLA filament. And it's a material that's derived from corn. So when you make stuff with it, it actually kind of smells like maple syrup. And uh, it's just wonderfully strong. And for engineers, it's, it's, it's absurdly dimensionally stable. It holds its shape. Mm -hmm. And the, whatever size you want to make something, whatever you say it's going to, however the size you want to make, you say it's going to make it, it's going to make it that size. But uh, how many people are into this? Where, how would you compare this to the computer revolution? Where are we in the printer, <coughs> 3D printer revolution? So before MakerBot, we were definitely in the mainframe era of 3D printing. I, I wanted one. In fact, that's why we had to start the company is because we wanted 3D printers, but they were in you know, secret institutions right. and laboratories mm -hmm. and, and elite educational facilities, and we just couldn't get access, and they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we were like, we didn't know any better, so we just thought, well, we'll make one. And um, then it almost worked. And then we had to make another one. And then the next thing you know, it, it started working. So we went pretty quickly through like the, uh, the Altair 8080 stage <laughs> onto like the, the, you know, the Apple One stage. That was probably our prototype. Right. And then now we're, we're, we're firmly in like the Apple II, maybe even Mac maybe era. Maybe a Mac era. Yeah. Now, Laura Tomlin, you have a whole bunch of knots and things that you designed on a 3D printer. You printed them out. That's right. Describe what they look like. Well, okay, so one knot is actually a link. It's, this, it's called the Borromean rings. It has three loops, each of which uh, no two are connected, but all three, they are connected together. Um, mm -hmm. this, is a, this was printed on a MakerBot Replicator 2, very much like the Mini that is here right now. And some other knots we have are, uh, we have a pedal knot, which was just recently proved that every knot has a pedal confirmation, so I, it's just going to be where people can right. see it. Maybe we'll take a picture of it. Yeah. Um, if when you have a knot in space, the it's imagine like a shoelace uh, tied up in space, and then the ends attached together again, and then it can take different shapes. And this pedal knot has all the crossings lined up in one place. It's really amazing. What's so great about about Laura's work is it. It, it's one of the things that's the most interesting th things happen when people connect their passion with a 3D printer and your passion for math and knots is just like, y I wouldn't have been able to understand these 
in like on a piece of paper. But when you put them in, in front of me, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I, I know that you can now scan people's heads yeah. and make 3D heads. I think when you can scan people's cats, and people, you know how popular cats are on the internet. When people can exchange not just pictures of their cats on Facebook, but the actual files and, hey, print my cat out, print your cat out. And then the we killer, have to put the killer app. Then we have to put lasers in their eyes, and <laughs> and and then the internet will explode. But you say that people discover things that uh, that they can do by their passion. They don't know that they can even make these things, right? Yeah, it's one of the, it's that's the most exciting thing. I mean, you can use a, a a MakerBot for for making all sorts of things. It's endless fun, and it's great for parents and teachers. If you can design it on a computer, and you can show it on a computer, you can eventually make it on three D. Thank <laughs> you.